Las Vegas, on the titles, and welcome to Chris Garcia, the conservative American. And I'm so glad to be with you today. Uh, we're getting close to the new year, and I wish everyone a blessed new year, a profitable new year, and a safe new year. Uh, hold on to your loved ones. Be safe. Please don't drink and drive over the holiday season. And that is a message that everyone here at Radio True to You shares. Please be safe over these holidays. We don't need anybody to lose any loved one on the holidays because of driving while impaired or drunk and driving. Please don't do it. If you feel impaired in any way, call a cab or sleep where you're at until you are sober enough to go home. But do not endanger anyone of their families on the road. With that being said, I want to jump right into this fiasco that is going on between the United States government and Israel. Thank you, Barack Hussein Obama. I mean, one more ridiculous thing that you've done in the worst administration in the history of the United States. How can we turn our back on what's going on in Israel? It is absolutely ridiculous. Those people are building those settlements because the Palestinians from time to time, whether it be ISIS or whether it be uh, uh, Al-Qaeda or the Taliban, whoever uses the Palestinian land to lob missiles over into the sovereign nation of Israel. And the thing about it, it's been going on for years, for decades. And nobody ever takes notice, really. I mean, it is a war crime. And they are lobbing missiles into Israel. And before those settlements were being built, you didn't hear much about it because they were unpopulated. The missiles that those terrorists used, the Palestinians lobbed into Israel, who is an ally of the United States, it's never really gotten much notice for years and years and years because there were people on the land when those missiles were exploding. Very few of their missiles were actually able to reach uh, Jerusalem and some of the other countries, some of the other cities inside of Israel. So most of the time, these, these missiles that were lobbed, these terrorist organizations that were lobbing missiles into Israel, it wasn't affecting anyone. But Israel began to pay some of its citizens to uh, have uh, homes closer to the Palestinian-Israeli border. And they call them settlements. They're basically suburbs that are made uh, close to the Israeli-Palestinian border. And now when these Palestinians lob missiles into Israel, they are killing Israelites. They are killing children. It is a war crime. It is against the UN resolution. And we have an apologist president, Barack Hussein Obama, apologizing for the fact that John Kerry met with Palestinian officials and basically wanted to stop the Israelites from building on their own land, in their own country, from building settlements close to the border. I think that's, that's a joke. That's ridiculous. How can you tell people well to, where to build inside of their own country? They have the right to defend their country. They have a right to build settlements wherever they want. And how dare John Kerry go behind the Israelites' back and meet with Palestinian officials. They are putting the country of Israel in danger. It is a disgrace what the United States is doing. And then to call in your vote to not even have the, the, the guts to come in and vote on the UN resolution on those settlements to just call in and say that you agree with the fact that Israel has the right to build those settlements. I think it is absolutely disrespectful. I can now understand why Benjamin Netanyahu came to the United States and gave a speech to Congress without Barack Obama's permission. I think the entire administration, the entire Obama, Hillary Clinton, John Kerry administration has put us in such a bad position all over the world, whether it be with Russia, whether it be with China, whether it be in the Middle East, whether it be with the Israeli-Palestinian situation. We are a much more in a much more dangerous world. We left a vacuum in Afghanistan and, and Iraq and allowed ISIS to grow, who is now in more than 32 countries around the world. This has been the worst foreign policy since Jimmy Carter, and I think worse than Jimmy Carter's uh, uh, foreign policy. Because at least during the Carter administration, the Israelites and the Palestinians came the closest to having peace that they've ever had in their existence. We all know that the solution is a two-state situation. Everyone knows that. That's common sense. 
But the Israelites have a right. Israel has a right to defend itself. The Jewish nation of Israel has a right to defend itself. They have a right to build on their border as close as they want to. They have a right to put those settlements up there. And there is nobody's right to lob missiles and kill their civilians. Palestinians do not have a right to do that. And then when the Israelites respond and they go into these Palestinian neighborhoods, into these Palestinian ghettos, and if they kill one Palestinian person or one Palestinian child, oh my God, they're terrorists. Look at what they're doing. But nobody says anything when Palestine lost, lost thousands of missiles into Israel's sovereign country, into their country. Nobody does anything about that. Nobody says anything about that. So Israel has a right to build settlements, and John Kerry has no right whatsoever to go behind the Israel's back and talk to the Palestinian leaders. He has absolutely no right, and they have proof. Benjamin Netanyahu, if you've seen him on the news, they have proof because John Kerry tried to deny that the meeting ever took place. But the Palestinians have videos of the meeting. They have his schedule. They have his agenda. They, the Israel knows, the Israeli government knows that John Kerry met with them and what they talked about. He has proof. The Egyptians have proof that the meeting did take place. And I think it's just an absolute shame that we're supposed to be their number one supporter. We're supposed to be their number one ally. Anytime the United States has gone into Iraq the last two times or anything that we do all around the world fighting terrorism, Israel is always the first to send soldiers. Israel is always the first to send uh, jet pilots. They are always the first people, them along with Great Britain, that always sides with the United States no matter what. Even before a U.N. vote has taken place, Israel and Britain are our two main allies, and they are always on our side. How dare us go behind their back? We're putting their country in jeopardy by not understanding why they need to build those settlements on their own property, on their own soil, in their own country. Uh, that's a shame. Shame on you, John Kerry. Shame on you, Barack Obama. Shame on you, Hillary Clinton, when you were Secretary of State. I'm so glad that we only have a few more weeks of this appalling administration and they are trying to just do more destructive work before they leave office. I don't believe that he can let go. I don't believe this administration can let go. And how dare they, after George W. Bush um, was so thoughtful and so considerate and helped Barack Obama, who's talked about it himself, uh, how, how respectful George Bush's administration was when he took office, how helpful they were to him and Michelle Obama when they were in transition to the White House. And what is this man doing by Donald Trump? He's still saying that he would have beat Donald Trump in a general election. He's saying that they, you know, the, I think him and Hillary Clinton were behind uh, the, 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 the recount effort. I mean, he can't let go. He lost. And George W. Bush, you know, uh, when, he, when his terms were up, when his two terms were up, he did everything he can to help Barack and Michelle Obama train their staff transition into the White House and have an easy time of it. And even Barack Obama talked about that, how much the Bush administration helped them in their transition to. You know, you ought to, you ought to take a page out of their book, Barack Obama, and you need to help this Trump administration because if you really are a patriot, if you really do love this country, then you want the best for this country. And you want, even though the person that you support, Hillary Clinton lost, you should want the best for the country. I wouldn't have cared if Hillary Clinton won or lost I want this country to go in the right direction. And I pray for anybody that's the president of the United States. I pray for them to lead this country in the right direction. And if you're not, then you're not a patriot and you don't love this country. And I don't believe Barack Obama and I don't think Hillary Clinton. I think the only time that they love this country, the only time they're proud of this country, and Michelle Obama said this, is when they won. When Donald Trump won, she said she's not proud of this country anymore. That, that's just incredible. I'm proud of this country every single day. Win, lose, or draw, it doesn't make a difference. This is the greatest country on earth. And in life, you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, you're going to win some elections, you're going to lose some. But you should still love this country because the whole process and the whole freedom for us to have this process is what makes this country so great. So I think that's a shame that they feel that way, that the only time that they're happy and part of this country is when they win an election. That should not be the case. I think that that's ridiculous. I think it's just a joke. And I think that John Kerry ought to be ashamed of himself for meeting with those Palestinian leaders 
behind uh, the Israel government's back, I think that it's an absolute joke. And I think Benjamin Netanyahu saw through that. And he's already talking to Donald Trump. He's already made phone calls to Donald Trump. And I think that they're going to have a good relationship. I know Donald Trump for a fact backs Israel 110%. And I think that he's going to support Israel militarily, financially, in every other way. Because we need Israel. We need Israel to be an ally in the fight against ISIS, and the fight against other uh, uh, radical Islamic terrorists. We need them for, for base support if something jumps off in the Middle East. And they just, you know, they keep stability in the Middle East. If you pull Israel out, if you allow those countries to force Israel out, the Middle East will turn into an absolute disaster. So it is very important that we have Israel as an ally in the Middle East and that we support them in every way, shape, or form. Um, I think that it's just a shame what John Kerry did, and uh, I hope that he is reprimanded. I hope that the American people hold him accountable for what he's done. And I think the Obama administration ought to be ashamed that they're trying to do everything in their power to have Donald Trump get off to a bad first 100 days. I think Donald Trump has already started his 100 days. All, everybody always talks about he didn't wait. That's how smart he was. He's not even going to wait for him to officially become president because he knows once that happens, the 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 Harry Reid, Nancy Pelosi nuts on the left hand side are going to do everything in their power to keep him from being successful. So he already started his hundred days as soon as he won the general election. He's not going to wait to be sworn in. He's saving jobs and carrying. He's cutting costs with Boeing. He is meeting with the people. Why are you already meeting with world leaders and taking phone calls? He's putting China on notice. Everybody's afraid of China. I'm not afraid of China. And neither is Donald Trump. Uh, we are the strongest military in the world. We are the number one economy in the world. And trust me, if we start buying, stop buying Chinese goods, they're in a world of hurt. So they need to start cutting fair trade deals with the United States of America. And I believe that's why he took that call from the Taiwanese president that broke protocol, I think he's going to send a signal to China and every other country all over the world. Don't mess with us. There's a new day and there's going to be new fair trade. It's going to benefit the American people and the Chinese people, not just the Chinese people. So I think a lot of protocol, a lot of political correctness is going to get broken uh, in the first hundred days. I think he's already starting his first hundred days. I think he hit the ground running. I think he assembled a wonderful staff and a wonderful administration. And I think that we are going to have a president that we can be proud of and not a president that goes behind our allies' backs and tries to apologize to other countries, terrorist countries, terrorist countries that are openly supporting radical Islamic terrorists. They can't say the word I can't help, and Donald Trump can. It is an absolute joke what's going on. And, uh, uh, you know, our, our president of our United States is going around apologizing to these people and cutting deals with them in back rooms. And this is where these people live. Israel is under constant threat. They are surrounded by enemies. They are surrounded by terrorist Islamic states that would like nothing less than the destruction of Israel. We are supposed to support them 100%. If they think that the United States is not supporting Israel, then that's going to make Israel it's going to be a much more dangerous situation for the Israeli government and for their citizens. You know, let's face it, one of the main reasons those countries have not ganged up is because they know that if you lob one missile at Israel, if you kill one Israeli citizen, the United States government has Israel's back. If the, the thought process starts getting out to these terrorist organizations and these Islamic terrorist countries that the United States in any way, shape, or form is having a problem with the Israeli government if they're not seen as getting along, then that puts every Israeli person in jeopardy. And I think that that's a joke. I think that we should be their number one supporters. We should be there for them. They have been there for us. And I think anything less than that is asinine, and I think it makes absolutely no sense. But, you know, what's to expect from Barack Hussein Obama? I mean, you know, this is what he does. Uh, he is the worst president that I've ever seen. And uh, I can't wait till he gets out. We got three more weeks and he is out of office. But I'm very proud that Donald Trump hit the ground running. He did not wait for things to happen. He took, you know, uh, he took things into his own hands. He did not, he's not waiting for people to, 
to, to see what he's going to do or vote on what he's going to do. He's hit the ground running he's, before he's become president. And he's getting so many things done, like the Boeing deal. Boeing agreed to make Air Force One, both of them, for less than the $4, million, $4 billion price tag that they were trying to charge the American people. That's a joke. And Donald Trump said, listen, I can get somebody to, to make the Trump plane uh, as close to Air Force One, and I can get it done at half the price. So you're going to bring that price tag down, or I'm going to deal with someone else. And that's what he's going to do, I think, all around the world, meeting with other countries, meeting with other leaders. I think his Secretary of State is going to be awesome. I think that this man worked for ExxonMobil, and he has connections, business connections all over the world. And he's going to tell people, hey, you're going to cut costs. You're going to, you're going to redo these, some of these trade deals. You're going to help our people because the American people have been forgotten for too long. The American people uh, have been taken for granted. Uh, the middle class working people in Ohio and Michigan and Indiana and West Virginia and all over the country, they have been taken for granted. So we have a president now that is going to put those people first, is going to bring jobs back to America, and is going to make sure that there are fair trade deals and not one-sided trade deals like NAFTA. And we already killed the TCP and other trade deals because they're going to be bad for the American people. And we're going to start offering tax incentives and other things for the American people and the American businesses to stay here. Uh, I think that, you know, a lot of people always talk about how these companies are losing money. These companies are not losing money. These CEOs are not losing money. If you think that they are, look at some of the balloon payments that they get when they retire, even if they do something wrong. Look at some of the payoffs that they get. So they're not losing money. These companies aren't losing money. These companies are just looking for a way to make more money. And I think that it's at the expense of the American people. And I think that they have to give a little of their money, and I think the government has to give a little. I think that we have a president now that will work with them, not against them. And while I, I definitely understand capitalism, I worked in finance for years in Chicago, and I understand you always want to take your business to the most profitable place that you possibly can. And you feel like if that's overseas, I understand that. But you should always, I believe, give your home country a fair shot. Uh, if, if anybody plays sports and follows sports, we always know that a lot of professional athletes give the city that they're playing for is called a hometown discount. And if you have an opportunity to make $100 million to move your family or $80 million to stay at home, a lot of people will take the $80 million to stay at home because it's not worth uprooting your family from their schools and their friends and, and their jobs and their home just to get a couple of more bucks. And I think that now we have a president that will work with businesses to stay here, offer incentives to stay here. And maybe, yes, they won't make all the money that they would have made if they would have taken those jobs overseas. But at least we will be competitive in what we can offer them. So I think it's, it's very important that we have a president that's going to do that. We have a president whose foreign policy will be totally different than the Barack Obama, John Kerry, Hillary Clinton foreign policy, which, as we've seen, the world is more dangerous now that he's leaving than when he took office. We have ISIS in over 32 countries. We have radical Islamic terrorists in this country and all over the world. And we're going to be fighting this war for a very long time. If we think the Cold War was long, I think this war is going to be longer. And it's going to be more dangerous and it's going to claim more lives. Uh, a lot of them in the Cold War, it was a lot of the espionage and a lot of things going on. But I think that we are going to uh, unfortunately lose American citizens and lose citizens all over the world. Uh, because of radical Islamic terrorism. And at least we have a president that will call it by what it is and will stand up and fight it. And we need to get John Kerry and the rest of these people out of office so that we can start fresh and let Israel and let our other allies know we have their back. We are behind you 110%. And we will not forget you because those people have been there for us. And I think that it's just a shame. Uh, John Kerry, once again, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. We don't need to hear your apology. We don't need to hear that the meeting didn't take place because the meeting did take place. And the Israeli government has proved that the meeting takes, took place. Uh, thank you once again for watching. Again, I'm on from 1 to 1.30. Chris Garcia, the conservative American. And the number you can call in, you can talk to me. I thank you for watching my show on YouTube, which is up uh, every night. And uh, subscribe, please, to me and put it on your phone when you watch the show. Subscribe to Face the Tribune with Rolando LaRosse. That is on from 12 to 1 o'clock before me. And subscribe to Chris Garcia, the conservative American. And once the show comes up on YouTube, it will go directly to your phone. 
if you would like to call in and join the conversation, or if you have any advertising that you would like to do on my show, call in 702-983-0711 or call 702-600-0005 and you can do advertising on Face the Tribune or Chris Garcia with the Conservative American and we would love to hear from you and hear feedback and just thank you for watching the show and God bless America, God bless our troops all over the world and God speak to Donald Trump. I will see you tomorrow.